Real quick question, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin this one. We will be doing the reaction our normal way, you know, with us up here like this versus, uh, <coughs> oh yeah, by the way, Kate's sick, so, uh, everyone, uh, everyone wish Kate well, because she's, she's been sick now for the last little bit, and we, we're trying to help her get better. I got two bags of golf drops. Yeah. Yeah, she got some Ricola, and what's the other one? Honeys, I don't know. Re yeah, Ricola is in honeys. Yeah, so, she's doing her best to get better, and, uh, you know, we're trying to help her out as much as we can. Uh, so, yeah, the announcement is a little bit of a question for some of you out there. Uh, whenever we do reactions in the future, I might try this and see how it goes. But this is what I was thinking, where whenever we're talking, you know, whenever we pause the video, uh, and whenever we're, you know, in the beginning or at the end of the video, <laughs> it's like this. But then whenever uh, the reaction starts or whenever we start doing reaction bits then it'll switch to this view so as you can see i'm up here nick is over there in that corner and kate is down here in the bottom left and uh we were thinking about trying this to see what you all thought uh you know so whenever the reaction's going you know whatever's on screen here uh we'll be playing and then after that uh during whenever we're talking like if i pause then i'm just like Okay, so like all that being said with the da 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 da, da yeah, <clears throat> and then whenever we go back to the reaction, you know, just go back to this and hit play again. I mean, it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but I think I'll be able to pull it off pretty. I'll be able to pull it off pretty easily. But for right it's gotta now, gotta be a way to rig some kind of simple, simple <coughs> script to where whenever you tap like the space bar, it would both start the video as well as swap the video. Probably, but I can probably just get a, I can probably just get my um, Elgato uh, stream deck down here. It's just an extra step or, where you have to hit or, the both space bar and a button. Which, which is why, I, which is why you know I can just hit the space bar and then I can hit this thing on the stream deck. And it'll switch out, like hit that, and then hit the stream deck, and then we're on. We can switch screens. Yeah, but I would just say like it'd be cool if you could rig it up to just be on the same button press. Yeah. Yeah. True. But we'll we'll see if we can figure out how to do a script like that. Either way, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie when uh, it, when it came out, it <clears throat> took over the world basically, and it wasn't unseated as the most popular film of the year until the Barbie movie came out, which. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it. And now there's a lot of people saying, well, it's going to be the highest grossing video game adaptation of the year. Meanwhile, in the background, ooh, 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 yeah. ooh, ooh, Five, Nights, Five Nights at Freddy's, Freddy's. Is about to come out. Oh. Exactly. And I'm actually going to the theater to see that because I'm just same. like... Same, same. I don't uh, give a shit about the games, but I'm surprisingly interested in that. Well, third, uh, I'm thinking about going like I mean, early helps Thursday the, night showing helps the or, or going late Friday because... The late Friday showing, I'm going to be free because... Are you going? Because Micah... I won't go on there? release day. Like, <clears throat> I will never go on release day to a movie. It's a good way to have the movie ruined for you. How's that? Because there's too many people. This theater's way too full. Release day has always got awful for any given movie. I strongly disagree. Avengers Endgame was easily one of the best only exception moments. I've ever been to. But like I've had, no. I've had like that is the one movie that I've enjoyed being in a big crowd of theater for. Every single other theater, especially Five Nights at Freddy's, it's going to be fucking packed with kids, man. Like fucking packed to the brim with kids. Which is why I want to go to one of the late showings or probably the early Thursday midnight showings. I want to guarantee go like, you the kids won't be there. I want to go in the afternoon, like a few days after it's been released. You're gonna run into nothing but kids. No, they'll all be in school. Mm mm. Afternoon? Mm -hmm. They'll be out of school. Afternoon, like around like. If you go at like 1 p.m. Then maybe. There's people that get out of school early. Yeah, half days. Half days are. I mean, I'm just prominent. telling that you is. what works for me every time I go to the theater. And that's fair. That's fair. 
Why are Hollywood movies not making money? Is it possible people just don't like going to the theaters anymore? Is there any hope for cinema? Will anybody go to theaters when you can just stream at home? Big budget movies are failing because there's no good films anymore. The problem is Hollywood doesn't want to make good movies. So why would people want to leave their homes to see them? Well, of course those two movies bombed. They're cartoons. Mamma mia! <laughs> Isn't that always the case? I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have my problems with Elemental, and and I what, I looked at. I was, was like, it? huh? What was it? It was basically a a film about all I mean, the different. I watched it, but what was your what my problems with it? It was just like the story beats, like everything that they tried to do is like the moral the moral of the story and everything just fell flat because like none of the characters learned anything. Mm-hmm. And that's my big problem. Is like, look, I like the world. I like, like, oh, the the air people. Whenever they leave at the top, you know, the balloon deflates and goes down. Then the people at the bottom get into it and it goes back up. And then they can transport back the other way. Like that's inventive. That like, there's a lot of inventive stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But it's just like all of the moral standing, all of the moral posturing. It's just like we all have to learn from each other and live together. It's like, I wish that they no duh. Was. I wish whenever they talked in the fireish or whatever that they would have had subtitles because I had my subtitles on I keep them on on my TV and it was just all gibberish so you didn't really know what they were talking about like which was mainly the beginning of the movie but still yeah At least they shortened the intro a little Hello, bit. Hello, yeah. I'm We've all seen it a thousand times. Remember it so you don't have to. With the curse of video game movies being played for so long, <coughs> one does have to ask the question: Was this really so hard? <laughs> Not really. The Super Mario Brothers movie more than replaced its predecessor that came out 30 years earlier, and is the latest hit that's asking the question: You know, if you make it like what people enjoyed originally. Does a sequel or adaptation have to suck? Though many were concerned with the bizarre casting choices and often juvenile studio making it, the fact is Super mm. Mario Brothers is a movie that really only Illumination could make. Most of the other studios would try too hard to make it a self-sufficient, multi-layered, important movie, and that's not really what most people wanted. We wanted Mario Brothers, bright, silly, simple. It's not a movie that tried too hard, it's a movie that tried hard enough. Nobody really wants a complex plot when it comes to these characters in this world, but they want something that still represents what we like about these characters and this world. And you can feel the love for all of that in this flick. Yeah. It famously didn't get well, much Well, I mean, when you play Mario, why are you playing Mario? Like, what is the number one, like, thing you're looking for out of playing a Mario game? Fun. Exactly. Yeah. That's what this movie was. Fun. Yeah. That it, it doesn't have to be overly complex. And that's one reason why yeah. I didn't have to be trust profound. the critics on this. Because the critics talk so much shit about this, just be like, "Oh, it's just, it's too simple. It's too, it's too bland. It, it doesn't, it doesn't have, have to, to it. be profound. It's fun. Exactly. Just like a Mario game. Like that's the point. It's hard to say it really oh, got no, trashed. It you, still technically has the majority that. of critics liking it, but it's just not the overwhelming it's majority. It's not that surprising. I mean, if you're an adult who didn't grow up with Mario Brothers, Do I don't know how entertaining it? this very clear yeah. Nintendo commercial is going. I mean, honestly, I I grew up with Mario and I found it to be very entertaining. Mm -hmm. My dad found it to be very entertaining, and he he was only introduced to Mario whenever he was in like high school, like going into college. To what my mom and sister would think about it, like they've played like the original Super Mario Brothers, but not like all the 3D ones and stuff since then. True, true. But I'm wondering if they would still have fun watching it or not. Gonna be. But there's been other clear commercials out there we've gotten into and found a lot of charm in. With that said, true. is it perfect? That's a take on me song reference of no. It still has uh, problems like most Illumination films do, but I think fans agree when they think of what a Super Mario Brothers movie would be like, this is about as close as it gets. So what are the strengths, weaknesses, and you know, oh, yeah. we're still trying to decide if we're sick of or not. Well, let's take a closer look. Uh, I'm already sick of it. <laughs> Never going back. <laughs> yeah. 
never going back. I, I love John Leguizamo. I love Bob Hoskins. That film was god fucking awful. Eh, this movie's really <laughs> trying to show up Disney saying, hey, we can dick up our castles as much as you can. True, true. One of the most enjoyable elements for any fan is how well the music incorporates the Nintendo themes. Bum, bum, Brian Tyler bum, bum, is a bum, bum, crazily underappreciated composer. Yes, he, he did is. a damn good job working in Koji Kondo's music while still keeping it cinematic. Does this thing work? Yes. <laughs> also, a big thank you for not having Jack Black sing Bowser's theme. Seriously enough, now I want to hear it. Now I want to hear Jack Black do it. <laughs> Open the gates! On that note, as I know a lot of people have said, Jack Black is probably the best casting choice in the movie. Do you yield? I would agree. <laughs> I do not. He steals a star from this kingdom of penguins and has both the threatening base yet comedic bounciness a villain like this needs. I finally found it, and now no one can stop me! Nobody except a callback to an 80s show with Bad King that technically should have keyed Luigi out too. Kevin missed opportunity. Well, it's no dick ray. Forget that the expensive plumbing companies are where you're just a face. They kind of cleverly show why the Charles Martinet Mario voice would have worked for the entire movie while also giving a loving nod. What about the accent? Is it too much? Too much? It's a perfect! Wahoo! <laughs> also, I'm sad to see Charles Martinet go as, as the voice of Mario. It, it's sad, but at the same time, I understand. Like, they have to move on. It's by Chris Pratt, which, like I said, had a lot of controversy behind it. He's fine. Yeah. Before Mario yeah. 64, I always saw Mario as having more of a deep, raspy Brooklyn voice, kind of like what Bob Hoskins or the cartoon had. Well, I, I mean, Bob Hoskins, I will say that's one thing he did kill in the role of Mario. He did nail, like, that Brooklyn, like, that Brooklyn, like, hard nose, like, no nonsense kind of guy who you would definitely expect to be a plumber. Because he's, yeah, he's just, he's like, only kind of shit I take is the kind that I flush down the toilet. It definitely looks like a plumber. Yes. The only thing miraculous I know is that we're still eating. Now we're going to clog you out of the Mushroom Kingdom. But Pratt isn't distracting as the voice, he's just serviceable. It's not the voice I think of when I see the character, but I'm also not thinking of him in the recording studio saying these lines either. It's an okay in between. I am so glad we spent our life savings on this commercial. That is not a commercial. That is cinema. cinema. Not true. Critics also reviewed that commercial <laughs> and disliked it just as much. Our mom called and she said, Oh, boys, that's the best commercial I've ever seen. Charlie Day plays his brother, Luigi. He's fine. Okay. I actually thought he would disagree on that one. Charlie Day was the second best in the movie. I think we can all agree that Charlie Day as Luigi was definitely a step up from Chris Pratt. Yes. I mean, because Chris Pratt, he's he's serviceable as I mean, the protagonist. Yes, I'm biased. I fucking love Charlie. I love Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Of course, yeah. But, like, the way he voice acted Luigi, in my opinion, was, like, above and beyond what I expected him to sound like. Yeah. So, I... And I could definitely hear him, like... They, at, they're talking about a Luigi's Mansion movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. after the sequel. Charlie yelling, Mario! Like, uh, not only that, but also him screaming, like, a boo coming up behind him. And just, he turns around and the boo's like, hey. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie has a great scream. Yes. You've seen, like, he does. Certain Always Sunny episodes. And Especially a... the one where he steps in the bear trap. Ooh! Yeah. Yes! Oh, that's the, the championship game. Yep. Yeah. She's like, Charlie, you have to put your foot back in the bear trap. Yeah, that's the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Yep. That was great. It's it like, oh, come on, thing. man. I just, he just told me to get out of thing In this movie, as I'm a big fan of his stuff, but like Pratt, he <laughs> doesn't really add much, but he doesn't take away much either. Which is good, as your eye's gonna constantly be darting for all the Nintendo Easter eggs in this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they are everywhere. <laughs> yes. And you know, it seems like uh, every franchise movie is doing this, but let's just say it, 
there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. There's references that feel distracting and desperate. Like, it's a cheap way to show they understand the property when really all they're doing is acknowledging they know it exists. But something like the DuckTales... Are you referring to that side-scroller scene? <clears throat> the side-scroller scene, I guess, but there's also there's also some pretty heavy-handed... I like, really think that's a subjective thing. Like, I think if the side-scroller screen, if you have the opinion that Doug has, like, I feel the opposite about those kinds of things. Like, for me, the only good part of the first Doom movie was that last sequence the, where they oh were yeah, the, the first-person first person shooter. shooter. Yeah. It was fucking bad. That was killer. I love that. And, like, that, that side-scroller scene was actually one of my favorite scenes from the Mario movie. I was like, <laughs> that's I will, really cool. I will say this. The song choice was pretty good, too. But here's the problem with, like, depending on song choices of that nature, you date it. You date the product that you're, that you're putting out there. Mm -hmm. But... I guess if it's a classic song like No Sleep Till Brooklyn and it's set in Brooklyn, I mean, it kind of works. It works more than than some other music references that are in this film. I, I just think, films. yeah, some of the music choices were my only other, like, real gripe with it besides the Peaches sport. It's yeah. It's just, like, I don't think it needed mainstream soundtracking. I think it should have all been scored. And yes, this shows there's a cleverness, excitement, and even love for building this world. Yeah. It's cool knowing Mayor Pauline is in this universe. <laughs> Apparently, Little Mac opened a restaurant. Jumpman is this world's version of Mario, which was another <laughs> name for him. They're both in-jokes and world-building tools that make me want to know more about this environment rather than distract from it. Even the side-scrolling shtick I thought was a little lame the first time I saw it, but I kind of like the comparison that running through a battlefield is pretty similar to just getting through New York. <laughs> the more I let it sit, the more it kind of grew on me. Hello, Super Mario Brothers! See, so Doug, Doug appreciated it the more he the more he dug in, like, he let himself Well, he said he initially in thought it was lame, and I, I, I just have a different reaction to those kinds of things, I guess. I'm just like, <laughs> that's pretty cool, you know? There's that stuff, stuff that Doug finds irritating that me, I don't mind as much. Yeah. For instance... To Doug and Chris Stuckman are two of my favorite movie critics out there. Like, I love their work. They have very different opinions on one film that I would love to see them do a debate over. Um, the movie Signs, you know, with Mel Gibson, mm. the M. Night Shyamalan film. Doug Walker hates that film. <laughs> hates, hates, hates it. Chris Stuckman, on the other hand, loves it. Cannot like cannot believe it didn't it, it cannot believe how people underestimate it so much and me I'm just like I hear both of their sides I like Signs I still think it's like a good eight out of ten film but Stuckman has it like a ten out of ten and Doug has it like a two out of ten <laughs> and I just love to hear like those two debate over uh, why they consider the film to be either the, their one of their favorites or one of their worst. But I, I already know my opinion's not always on exactly the same page as Doug's. Like, I mean, and with that, like, I've not actually seen Signs, but I really trust my best bro's opinion on, like, horror films and stuff, and he loves Signs, so, like, he keeps telling me, like, you need to watch Signs at some It's point. a good like, one. Like, I'll get to it eventually. It's a good one. He really likes it's it. It's Uncle so. Frank! He says he can play your part if you ever get canceled <laughs> for some dumb reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I read about that petition. And honestly, I wouldn't mind Danny DeVito as Mario. I think that'd be, that'd be a little... Yep. I think DeVito's a little too old, but I think it could still work. Just because Brad is passable doesn't mean I can't fantasize about better choices. Yeah. They're yes. called in to fix a leak at a fancy residence, but the secret life of Cujo causes trouble because they destroyed his toy. Sorry. You know, I would have loved it, actually, if the entire cast of Sony was actually the voice oh of Oh, my God. It's like... <laughs> D should have been Peach. I know. Frank should have been actually, in my opinion, Bowser. Oh, I could see that. And uh, who would Mac? Dennis be? should have been Mario. Yeah, and who would and Mac? And then Mac should have been Donkey Kong. I could see that. Actually, you know, I would love to see Dennis as King Boo. And I say all their character names, but I actually mean, you know. Yeah, you need Glenn. You need Caitlin, Glenn, Glenn, Rob, Charlie. Rob, Julie, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Danny. Yeah. Instead of Frank. But. but I would love to see... Actually, I'd love to see Dennis, you know, Glenn, as King Boo. And I, could, I think he'd make have, a good uh, King Boo. Oh, well, yeah. 
They could have thrown in Cricket somewhere. Oh, gosh. Yoshi. Cricket could have been Yoshi. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> So this is another example of the movie working just well enough. If this was only them fixing this leak and water going everywhere, it wouldn't be funny. But the addition of this incredibly expressive dog obsessing <coughs> over their demise adds the right amount to make it pretty humorous. It's not hilarious, but it is funny. It works. Found the problem. The job obviously. I don't know why, but there was something really funny to me too about when the dog starts to like the shower starts to fill up and you get the view of the just the dog like initial Dead like immediately paddle. starting to do his little doggy paddle like <laughs> he's swimming around in a circle like a shark. Yeah. Home to their family ashamed. Hey what were you thinking with that commercial? They give an Oscar for worst actors. It's all the Razzies. Also, that is incredibly delicious looking animated pasta. It's always the case in it, man. I mean, honestly, it, Miyazaki films, which are 2D animated, and I look at the food, food in that, and I'm just like, I want it. I don't give necessarily me. think about that with 3D film as much, though, but that, that pasta did look delicious. Yeah. Mario is seen as an Italian stereotype, but nobody had a problem with animated Moonstruck here? Put your day job. Oops, he already did. <laughs> I don't spare them the original script. Literally, it was just an entire page of everybody going, hey! Hey! Charles Martinet also voices Mario's father, which is, again, not only a nice <coughs> joke, but allows people who think he only does Mario's voice to see he can play different roles. You don't leave a steady job for some crazy dream. And the worst part, you're bringing your brother down with you. Nah, he's just upset because he never became the golf star he always wanted to be. <laughs> Seriously, you have to stand far back to even notice that one. It's <laughs> a lot of references, man. Get Icarus. Hey. Don't you think it's a little weird you're playing, you know? Nah, you want real confusing? Sonic is playing TurboGrafx-16 next door. Wait, what? <laughs> it's like there's some bad news on the news. <laughs> First underground today, flooding downtown Brooklyn. Scapilli. Oh my god. Luigi, this is our chance. Okay, so this is a crazy nitpick, but Mario's human hands without his gloves kind of looks like ugly Sonic's human teeth. I didn't know I'd be horrified <laughs> by that until I saw it. Yeah, I didn't actually Mario tells that. Luigi they should fix the epic leak, so they head into the sewers. We gotta get to that pressure valve. Mama. <laughs> This feels very teleporty to me. I'm getting the Warriors of Virtue or something worse vibe down here. Oh, God. <laughs> he continues to feed his green fetish, getting sucked into a mysterious green pipe and taking Mario with him, separating them along the way. I'm taking you to see the princess. She can help you. Keegan Michael Key plays Toad. He's not this. Here we go. Yeah, thank the God. He's fine. Kingdom. Mushrooms, really. Now that is a cruel twist of fate. Not since Popeye hating spinach have I wanted a bigger reaction, but didn't care. <laughs> I don't know if liking green eggs and ham can be an arc. Why not mushrooms? I need to see the princess. I never heard of any princess. Oh, wait, I did. Our princess, though, is in another castle. The thing! He said the thing! Yeah, not all the callbacks are good. Yeah. Eh, Toad turns this into a Zelda game for a moment. It so that was a kind the of like a... <laughs> yeah, that was like, oh, <laughs> Anya Taylor Joy. She's fine. She's about as just interesting enough as the rest of the cast. I'm going to convince the Great Kong army to help us. She was actually probably my least favorite cast other than Cranky Kong. Yeah, Cranky. She the did worst. not give me Peach Easy. voice vibes at all. No, but honestly, I think the normalization of her versus the uh, the the. Beaches got it all the time. It didn't have to be that high pitched and stuff, but it just, I don't know. It just came off as someone else. I, I couldn't place it, but it just didn't seem like her to me. Fair enough, I yeah. guess. Uh. Being Luigi instead of her as, yes, it is a pain. She always has to be rescued. But then again, that is the trope. Save the princess. It's like one of the oldest tropes there is. But first off, she, she came off Disney of princessy. Like, almost like Elsa or something. Yeah, kind of. It's like what I felt like. Well, and the thing is, she's she's capable in the film. Uh, we saw that with her with her thing, but... Or with, you know, her running the course and all that. But, I don't know, I mean... I'm, a, I'm not even talking about, like, the way the character's well, portrayed and what she does. It's just the way she sounds. Like, the way she sounds doesn't match Peach to me. 
I, I guess. guess. Peach was always a more uh, in like how she was presented in the games was more of a regal kind of princess. <laughs> Whereas here, I get what you're saying about it. she's more Disney princess than she is like how she was treated and like seen in the previous. Well, my number the one thing that comes to mind when I think of Peach's voice is the letter at the beginning of Mario 64. Oh yeah. She's like, dear Mario, like I've baked you a okay. cake, come to the castle, you know? True. And it's like she didn't give any kind of vibe similar to that. So that's why I'm just kind of like, hey, I don't know about that. Yeah, I guess. She was okay, Mario, but play with it. not really I peachy. Drunk. My favorite there. being in the old Nintendo Power comics. Where now, those were awesome. She breaks herself out while Mario breaks himself in. He gets kidnapped, she has to save him, and then they both get kidnapped, and they have to figure out a way to save each other. That's a fun spin <laughs> on the idea, and I like how, if you really think about it, she's basically training him how to rescue her later. Okay, that's nothing brilliant, but it's creative enough. Second, Mario and Luigi grew up with each other. They already have a connection. There's already an incentive for Mario to save him. It's clear they want a romantic relationship between Mario and Peach, and you can't fill that if they don't spend time together. Plus, with That's Luigi's true. newer personality being a scaredy cat, I think this works okay. Yeah. Damn that king I appreciate it that he got sent to the horror kind of place. Yeah. I like the, the way they did the skeleton to, uh, Koopas, too. The dry bones, yeah. The dry bones, yeah. Yeah, they, they were awesome. Made them seem kind of, like, creepy and intimidating. Oh, yeah, especially in high numbers. <laughs> The Kongs will never agree. Anyone who doesn't laugh at how seriously that line is delivered does not get why this film is supposed to be funny. <laughs> Mario tells <coughs> Peach about his missing brother, and because she hasn't seen a human in years, she takes pity on him and invites him to help out. How am I supposed to do that? With the power-ups. They give us special abilities. Yeah, I love they don't even try to explain the logic of power-ups or they the just lore say or the backstory abilities. or a stick Mario in a car for an hour. Everyone knows it's a video game movie. Just be a video game movie. Mm -hmm. With that said, 2023, stop trying to ruin I Need a Hero for me. Oh. <laughs> Nobody's gonna top Shrek 2. They own it. Stop trying to top yeah, Shrek 2. Yeah, they do. Not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> enough and they decide to journey to the Kongs to see if they'll join their battle against Bowser. You know what little rulers in this world put their faces on everything? You know this is a Mario movie, right? I'm Nintendo's Mickey Mouse. I'm the cash cow. I will protect you. A toad brave enough to join me. Wow, how has this world not gotten taken over yet? For that matter, I just realized his name is Toad, and yet they're all called Toads? Just don't hurt my Toads! Is that like when you meet a guy named Guy? You know it's stupid to think about, but it's all you can think about. Yeah, that's true. Summer is here, and everybody's getting into oh. the latest dance crazes. Oh, yeah. Factor, once again. Uh, I was say, didn't you try that for a while? Your mom did. Oh, okay. I just ate some while I was at her house. I don't know why that sounded like a your mom joke to me. Oh. It's like, didn't just... you try that for a while? No. Your mom did. Your mom. <laughs> like, but I know you actually meant it seriously. Like, your, mom. your mom like did it. Yeah, yeah my mom. The, she still had some in her freezer. She keeps them for a rainy day. It was just funny. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> Like, my mom. Like, yeah. <laughs> Your yeah, mom does. I was totally trying to make a joke. <laughs> it's good. It's fine. We see Luigi as Bowser's prisoner just as he's announcing his evil plan. I will ask their princess to marry me in a fairy tale wedding. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't know why any of us never put together he was going to be a simp for Peach in this. I mean, it's in like every version. But something yes. about seeing it as the focus of a movie just makes it so much funnier. Doesn't she hate you? Of course she hates me. But that makes me love her all the more. Maybe because there's a threatening voice to go with it. Maybe because he's surrounded by threatening imagery. Maybe because we don't really know his motivation until the start of the second act. But it's surprisingly pretty funny. Her heart-shaped bangs. The way she floats in the breeze. <laughs> her immovable tiara. And yeah, where are we with the song now? Peaches, 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 peaches. Well, according to the overplayed no, song list, we're past the legit goodness of Blame Canada. Having quite <laughs> the apocalyptic annoyance of Macarena. Just a little under the flip-flopping between love and hate of Let It Go. Just under the I'm annoyed, but I think I like it ironically, Rebecca Black's Friday. Ah, <laughs> uh, and we finally yeah, reached Friday the just good enough to make us forget about that weird cameo in Mandalorian. Oh! <laughs> 
for a song that's not even a minute long? Um, yeah, one of the biggest complaints from a lot of people, which I guess is a good problem to have, is the film could have been a little longer. Every scene I feel like could have benefited from yeah. just one more minute of screen time. Like we go into peaches. Peaches, 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 peaches. Okay, you're rising up on the list, man. <laughs> story, and it's not even a minute and a half long. She says she just appeared out of a warp pipe and the toads made her their ruler. When I was ready, they made me their princess. Which Queen. makes it even stranger if she's called princess. There's nobody above her. I don't think people know what the term means anymore. It just sounds pretty. Yeah. Regardless. Look at this place. Listen to that backstory. We want to enjoy this a little more. Maybe Peach is so We waited cute. a long time to see yeah. this world on the big screen. Have enough confidence in your film to slow down and let us enjoy it. I agree. I think that some scenes could have benefited from being another minute or two longer. And it wouldn't have really detracted from the runtime because the runtime's barely like 90 minutes, I think. As long as you don't go over a hundred minutes and get close to that two hour mark, you're not gonna lose people, man. Especially uh, if it's interesting like this. I'm not gonna ask for more where they could potentially not have the ideas up their sleeve and it, it, it ends up just being fluffed and padded. Well, you know? it, but that's the thing. The pacing is a... fine, like in my opinion. Like, yeah, you could ask for more, but I don't think it necessarily needs it either. I guess. But I still think that I still think that there was something there that could have been a little bit extra. Just my opinion. He help waiting as he's imprisoned with henchmen. Yeah, what they do? They walk <clears> back and forth in the wrong direction or glitch accidentally the giving ghost. infinite one-ups. <laughs> and I know the a franchise is working so when cute. I want to know more where a character is from. I never saw this There's thing Luma. before, but <laughs> man, do I want to play Super Mario Galaxy? I want because it. the little Luma. <laughs> By the way, that's voiced by the director's daughter. I know. I want one. I want one of the plushies. They have Luma plushies. Oh we'll see God. if we can't get you one. Because of him. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man! What kind of things does he say in the game? <laughs> Okay, I'll just imagine I'm Majora's Mask <laughs> next story or something. <laughs> Our heroes make it to the Kongs and need a reminder this is an Illumination movie. You know, for the random cast we've had in this movie, I'm surprised the halfway point is when we got our first pointless pop song. I need a hero at least has some connection. This is just a guy wearing a sports coat. Hey look, Mario's wearing red. Like that red guy from Eyes Wide Shut. So? I don't know. It'll make us a bazillion dollars anyway. They're taken to their leader, Cranky Kong, played by Fred Armisen. Worst casting in the film. Yeah. By far. Oh my god. <coughs> we could have had I can so think of like things. five to eight different people that would have been a way better choice. I agree. Mm. Jesus. He's the worst thing in the movie. Yes. <laughs> fighting alongside the greatest army in the world. Who would have thought, out of all these weird choices, Fred Armisen would be the worst one? I have no idea what they're trying to do with this voice. I heard you want my army. Guess you're not getting my army. You're welcome, Mario. Why couldn't they get someone like Larry David? He would have worked. Was there yes. just a ton of crypto offered or something? Are you two done whispering? It's a little rude. No, that's not it. He's it sounds like he's got a cold like me. Yeah, a little bit. All right, tough. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> there with you, Doug. Guy? You want my army so badly? Yeah, I know. Since I want the... He's <laughs> awful. <laughs> yes. True. Yeah, I know a guy who's screeching for a living is giving this dude a hard time about his voice, but... As I... <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Doug. Get on. <laughs> I get older, I can't do that screechy voice anymore. Fred Armisen's a lot older than me. So what's his excuse? Lucky for you guys, I got a shortcut. Well, what are you waiting for? Pick your car. In the great ring of cars. God, it's like Jar Jar Binks getting choked down by singing Russell Crowe. Oh. I went into this suffering. Goddamn effort. They agree that if one of them can defeat Yeah, I would son, still rather watch all Cranky Kong scenes five times again than have to listen to Jar Jar for five minutes. That's true. But That's true. Still wasn't good. Misa something something. Misa want to die. Prince? 
Donkey Kong? Again, the Royal Hierarchy is not really a thing in this movie. He'll hand over his army. He's voiced by Seth Rogen. He's not Fred Armisen. So Hi, Dad! Hi! No, no. Dad, wave back! Yeah, do you care how he is? All they have to do is play the Donkey Kong <coughs> rap, and you know you're theirs. Do you care? I'm Donkey Kong. <laughs> He's finally here, performing for you. If you know the words, you can join into. Oh shit, we just got copyright struck by the end. He's dead. Chunky. He's dead. DK. Okay. Chunky's Let's move dead. on. Sorry. I guess he got the wrong mushroom. Thank you. Yes. Any excuse to give him more lines, please do. Kong makes the Arthur fist and starts beating the crap out of Mario, but Mario gets a power up, turning him into. Meow Rio, I don't know, I'm not proud of that one. <laughs> oh. Now to piss on him to mock my territory. Oh my god, get this suit off! Oh, he was getting to the best part. <laughs> <I'm bruised. laughs> oh the Kongs join their army and they take their carts to Rainbow Road to try to ambush Bowser, who is clearly distracted. Yeah. Will you marry me? Oh, yes. <clears throat> What? Okay, I love how the Koopa wizard is angry too. Like he was really getting into that. Oh. Like, don't you know I'm bringing somebody's fan fiction to life? Oh, they think they can surprise me, huh? Two can play at that game. Bowser sends his forces to Rainbow Road, and this is hands down the coolest part of the movie. Yeah. Yes. That's my favorite track. <laughs> Again. How many people have played Mario Kart and imagined an action sequence like this on the big screen? Me, yes. me, <laughs> me. So many times. Not it me. has a ton of energy, <laughs> color, imagination. It's like Mad Max Sugar Rush. Mad Max Sugar Rush. <laughs> Aha, I activated the anti-gravity converter. Oh, you don't care. Just hear me say wahoo. Woohoo! Woohoo! Fox News logo during Pride Month as one of the drivers Ouch. goes Koopa Kazi and blue shells himself into Mario and Donkey Kong. And uh, I would have said, uh. Oh. We'll give him the Fox News logo during Pride Month as Fox News. Uh, no. I wouldn't have said Fox News logo. I would have said, and, uh. <laughs> Bowser goes full Jan or July 1st on the Pride. July 1st on the Pride Month. One of the drivers goes Koopa Kazi and blue shells himself into Mario. Every what does that mean? Every corporation, like, if you notice, every corporation, July 1st rolls around, all of their pride stuff goes away. All of it. Mm. All of their logos, all of their... Which all month of, is Pride Month? June. Oh. July 1st, it's just like, oh, Sorry, never exists. Sorry, please don't be offended. I don't, <laughs> I don't pay attention to this. It's okay. Also, uh, also... Well, it's because all of the corporations are doing nothing but trying to cash grab. Exactly. Yeah. It's like they don't actually care about LGBTQ people. No, at all. Mario and Donkey Kong. <laughs> Quick, use the game, Genie! Princess Peach. Bowser confesses his love to her while also threatening Toad if she doesn't marry him. You just don't hurt my toads. And that's the bravest toad they got. Why were there even guards in this kingdom? I mean, the weapon <laughs> that choice is frying pans half the time. Shouldn't that be their enemy? <laughs> I'm ruining. Peach agrees to marry him, and oh yeah, there's a brother in this Mario Brothers movie. Oh, goodbye. We have to deal with Mario and Donkey <laughs> Kong not getting along, but bonding over their disapproving fathers. At least you're not going to die with your dad thinking you're a joke. And well, my dad thinks I'm a joke, too. Yeah, this is the one time I don't really mind the movie being that short. Yeah. Really. Do you want to hear these guys talking about their dads, or do you want them to give you a Smash Brothers opening? Yes. Yes, yes this isn't a game. It's a movie, but it's a movie that knows its audience, and the audience wants it to be like the game. Nobody's expecting father issues. It's the fun of the games in the form of a movie. We need a platform just to get us from point A to point B. Moments like this are those movie <coughs> platforms just to get you to what you really want to focus on, the colorful action. Then when it gets to that, it does it well. I'll save you, princess. Oh, Luigi, that's right. I forgot you were in this. Destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! They have a big battle that probably has one too many slow-mo shots. Like 2000 Zack Snyder called. He asked if this guy can be trusted. And Ouch. everyone gets warped back to New York. 
admittedly, this is a little bit of a weird spot to have the climax, and honestly, I kind of forgot how similar some of these beats were to the 93 version. But again, <laughs> it is a movie, and they want to give these two a way of proving themselves <coughs> to their family, so yeah, it only makes sense to have an environment where their family can watch. I don't need a mansion to be brave! Why? You want a mansion? No, I... Well, yeah, actually, can I get that? <laughs> Two of them get the star and use their newfound power to defeat Bowser. Huh? Funny, I thought taking the shrooms would cause me to see a glow like that. They take out the henchmen and Bowser is shrunk down after being fed the blue mushroom. Let's hear it for the Super Mario Brothers! <laughs> he said the thing again. Do they really need to keep justifying this title? So after they finally win the respect of their Brooklyn family and all of the city of New York, they, of course, move to the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> but wait, there's more! That was kind of ruined earlier because we already saw the Yoshis, but whatever. To be fair, I never noticed it. True. To be fair, I never noticed it. But wait, All the Yoshis more. in the background? That was Kinda of ruined earlier because we already saw the Yoshis, but none there are no green ones. Yeah, none of them were green. That's. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, still a scary that sequel to this being promised. Oh god. And that was the Super Mario Brothers movie. Fun and all to be, the ways yeah, we want to like, To be perfectly fair, an after credit scene that would have got me way more hyped would have been involving, like, King Boo or Wario. Like, yeah, or Wario. Or War him basically like tell it like coming in out of the pipe, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh yeah!" <laughs> Just imagine like setting it up kind of like a Marvel after credit scene where you're showing the next villain, you know, and it's like. <laughs> You just hear voices, and it's in kind of a creepy-looking area, and it's just like, Sir, have you heard? It's like King Bowser's out of the picture for the moment. Really. Good. It's like... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so, and then, uh... You, you kind, of, kind of pans over, and you just see the shadow of, like, a round shape floating on the wall, and it's like, Now we make our move. And then you hear the actual iconic, like, laugh, like... <laughs> like the... the thing yeah. Like, <laughs> I know what you said. I, I know what you're talking about. I can't actually replicate well, it. Well, King Boo, laugh. King Boo's laugh in a uh, in a uh, uh, Luigi's Mansion was a. <laughs> oh yeah. Whereas like the regular Boo laugh was the. <laughs> yeah. Or you just hear like a, a chorus of like those laughs, you know, and you see like a bunch of the shapes. Ah like, yes. Like, near him, you know, he's got his like Boo army like laughing. I could see that. They're playing and stuff, and then that could be like, oh, it's probably gonna be like a Luigi's Mansion sequel, you know? Probably. To be fun and serviceable in all the ways we don't mind it being serviceable. It's rare we get a video game movie that really allows us to embrace the world we enjoy playing for so <laughs> many years. And it's even more rare that it's told in such a likable manner. It's clear this isn't a particularly deep story with deep characters, but it brings to life that world we all used to go to as kids. The world you created when you played with your toys or drew colorful drawings or, yes, played a video game. The simplicity feeds into the imagination without being insulting to it. Now, I will admit, when they do a sequel, it is when it's not if. Yes. That's when the story and characters probably need to be upped a bit. This is a ton of fun for now, but we do want it to grow and evolve. Not a ton, but still a little bit. There'll no doubt be missteps along the way, just like there were with this movie, but as long as they represent the same excitement and joy the makers clearly had in making this film and translating that to audiences who have the same excitement and joy watching it, many of us will be down for finding the princess in another castle. I'm a nostalgia critic, guy, remember it, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically I agree with a lot of the stuff that Doug was saying I mean a mm -hmm. uh, few things I disagree with him on but overall basically the same I feel the same this was a this was a great film a good start for the Mario Brothers universe animated universe <clears throat> and also like, basically my whole thing is just yeah like it's it's not a perfect film like by no. any means there's a lot of flaws but it was fun and the fact that it's not bad 
is just saying a lot for a video game movie because it's pretty much the first ever video game movie that you can say is not bad. Like, at least, you know? Yeah, and by that we mean, and by movie we mean movie, not TV series like The Last of Us yeah. or anything like that. I would say, I would say the Sonic the Hedgehog films Castlevania also. and The Last of Us. I mean, well, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, I've heard it's decent. I haven't actually seen it. I saw the first one entirely. I haven't seen the second one completely, but everyone says that the second one's better than the first one. But I guess at least, you know, second video game movie that's not bad in that case, pretty much. Yeah, and honestly, I like the fact that what we have here with this is, you know, it, this film was made, uh, by the way, this movie made over one and a half billion dollars at the box office. Mm. They only it only cost a hundred million dollars to make. Mm. That's what blows me away. Cause... Which will hopefully teach them a lesson that if you just do what video game fans would want you to do, you can make a lot of money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we like spending money on our hobby. Yes, and not only that, but also the thing is, you look at films uh, that cost oh gosh there's some films that costed like over 300 million dollars and they didn't make their money back and everyone's just like it's like i wonder why it, wonder why it costs so much like because of reshoots because of like overhaul because of vfx and all that whereas if you do it like this you know an animated film all the vfx and everything are encapsulated into like a uniform like art piece Instead of you taking film or taking like shots from a film and then adding layers of VFX onto it mm. and thus potentially like completely like disconnecting your audience from your film. Whereas here, people know what they're getting into whenever they're going into an animated film. Also, you can pull off more crazy stuff with animation. Mm -hmm. A lot more crazy stuff. And see, and that's why like I don't like the idea of a live action Zelda movie. I, yeah. I want Nintendo to produce <coughs> and hire the guys that made Kenner Bridge of Spirits and previous, like uh, prior to Bridge of Spirits, they made um, uh, shoot. They made that Majora's Mask short, yeah, I think. Uh, the, it's got the quote. It's the, the, the quote is the title. Like um, you've been met with a terrible fate. Yeah, I believe so. Something like that. Yeah. Or maybe it's just called Terrible Fate. There it is. Ma yeah, Majora's, Majora's Mask, Mask Terrible, Terrible Fate. Fate. Yep. Ember Lab. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Like, and I would 100% be, like, super, super stoked to go see, like, a full movie of that. Well, Ember Lab, I would give them, like, creative control over it, but I would let, I would turn them loose with the Illumination Animation team. Yeah. I, that's what I would That'd do. Be great. I would see, and I could see that being an epic I could definitely see it being an epic. Mm -hmm. At least like three hours. Or maybe do a series of films for like three... Like like do three three-hour films. That way you have nine hours to tell a story instead of just three. It just depends on how much is in that story. Like I guarantee you they could do that with any Zelda game. Uh, they could do that with... Do, they I could mean, do that with... Uh, it would be really interesting, Ocarina. especially since there's technically three days, like, until the moon drops. Majora's In Majora's Mask, Mask yeah. And if they, like, kind of tone back the time loop a little bit, so that they could maybe make one movie per the three days and have Link, like, using the entirety of the three days rather than time looping the three days over and over again. Yeah. That could be interesting. Definitely. I don't know if other Zelda fans would agree with me on that, but I think that's an interesting idea. Yeah. For a I movie can, of it. I can definitely see it. Uh, well, anyway, we're going to end it here, everyone. This was uh, the Nostalgia Critics Review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, what do y'all think of it? Uh, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I'm Nick. It's Bilbo and Clappy's under the blanket. We'll see you later, everybody. Peace.